And this group is not small anymore. It is a growing remnant. And there are probably more in other countries than here in America. And in fact, in fact that the, the Give Him 15, which is read by and listened to by quite a few people in this country, but not nearly as many people here as listen to it. Now, wait a minute. Everything, pretty much everything I write and pray about is, is regarding America. But there are more people in other nations that read it and, and listen to it every day than do here in America. There are several hundred thousand here. There are several million around the world. In many of the several of the, of the countries where this takes place, they don't watch it. They translate it into their language and, and just read it. And we say, why do you do that? Because the principles, they said, are the same. And also because we know if America falls, it's all over for all of us. I know during the election cycle in 2020, there were five, six million Chinese every day reading and praying the given 15s with us. And when we ask them why, and we know this for a fact because we talked to the people who translated it and disseminated it into China, the underground church. And they said, because if America falls, there's no hope for the rest of us. There is a growing army around the world. But now at this time. So, so when they came to David, it was like, here's your army, David. I mean, just literally a bunch of misfits. When I put myself in his position, he's living in a cave. His soldiers now that are following him are this, this, this crew of bitter, angry, poor discontented people I think what must he have thought he's been anointed to be king how hard would it be to hold on to that word so now Saul is pursuing him because Saul is demonized by now and he wants to kill David So David goes and inquires of a prophet, and the prophet says, says something interesting to David. He says, first thing you need to know is you need, you need to go back to Judah. Judah was David's tribe and inheritance. Going back to Judah would picture going back to his roots. Going back to covenant. See, when he fought Goliath a few chapters before this, the first two verses of the chapter are just geographical pictures of the region where Goliath had challenged them and where the battlefield was located. And for 30, 40 years of my life, I read over those two verses just to get to the good stuff. The giants and the challenge and the fighting and David running to the enemy and cutting the head off. But some of that geography is important. And the first two verses tell us Goliath was doing this in Judah, which is David's tribe, David's inheritance, David's land. Goliath was trying to take his land. From the very beginning of the chapter, God is establishing that if you believe what I said to your great, great, great grandfather, this battle's over. Because this giant can say he's taking it back or he's taking it, but I've already promised it and given it to Judah and you're part of Judah. So if you lay hold of that promise and stand on that, it's over. Even the even the, the weapon that David used, the sling, actually the 
the concept of the sling comes from the word Judah. Because Judah does not mean praise as most people think. Judah means to extend the hand. And the reason it became a word for praise is because what do we do when we praise? We extend the hand. But since it means extend the hand, it also, because see, Hebrew is a picture language. So it paints a picture and you put, apply that picture to different contexts and circumstances. Then you, you discern from that what it means. So in a worship service, Judah extending the hand means praise. But on a battlefield... The word Judah means one who throws a stone. Why? Because when you throw the stone, you extend the hand. So David has decided years before this, what weapon am I going to be proficient with? He's out on the mountainside watching the sheep. You know, he's, maybe he's got a bow, probably has a spear. Maybe he's got some stones. But this is the way I see it. David begins to meditate on his inheritance, his lineage, his covenant through Judah. He says, wait a minute, I'm from the tribe that throws stones. I know what I should become proficient at. The sling. But the prophetic picture that God wants us to see from that is in, in order to overcome his enemies, he tapped into his spiritual DNA, his roots. This is who God has made me. This is what God has given me. This is my land. You're standing on my property that God said belonged to my tribe. Therefore, you're going to lose. I'm going to win. And I'm coming after you with Judah. I think every time the devil sees us raise his hands, he flinches. Are they getting ready to throw a stone or are they worshiping or both? It's also why praise is a weapon. All the symbolism there is of what this word means. But the prophet says, go to Judah. When you're pursued, return to covenant. This is what this is this is what I do with that. When the enemy tries to tell me God's not going to come through and turn this nation around, I start talking and decreeing the promises God has made to America. I start rehearsing why God raised up America to trumpet the gospel to the ends of the earth. I begin to say what God has said. That is returning to covenant. Yes. And those words are powerful when we say those words. They are not just to encourage us. When we decree and declare what God says, power is released. 